working with middle school and it comes to working with, um, you know, kids that are older. In, in JB, I, I was listening to a video the other day of Jamie Works and, and he said it so, so wisely and it's something that I've always sort of consciously done. I just didn't have a sort of a name for it. And he said he always looks at the next three years because it's always this layering. It's never teach it once and then it's done. So it's been that way um, through the younger years. You're layering, layering, layering. You're layering things like new math concepts. Um, you're layering things like um, the art of writing a summary. You're layering all of those things. And then in middle school, you start to layer new things. And um, so one of the things, and, and I want to say too, I am considering middle school 6th, 7th, 8th, and ninth um, Because there's history content that goes with ninth that, that really makes it more middle school-ish. And there really is a shift that happens between ninth and 10th with them developmentally that um, I find it really helps to keep ninth sort of in that realm. So there's about four years there. Um, and people can disagree with me. That's okay. I'm, I'm not married to that. It's just something that I've noticed in teaching and um, I've noticed in writing for those years just sort of how they sort of go together a little bit more. Um, and definitely 7th, 8th, ninth, more than 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth, but 6th, you're starting to get um, more sciences in there, more depth in there. Um, the writing is getting deeper in there. So I am, when I'm looking at a sixth grader, I'm looking at what are they going to be doing in ninth grade as well. So I'm trying to see that whole spectrum of everything. Books that I think that are invaluable for um, this age group. Um, Between Form and Freedom by Betty Staley. Really invaluable. Um, it's all about the teenage years. It has a, a, an awful lot about you know temperaments in the younger years too, but really good for those years to come. So you'll need it after. <laughs> you'll need it from sixth grade probably on up. Um, I think it's a really good resource for um, for parents. I think you should read it. I think your partner should read it. Um, I think it's a good book. Also, um, I really like Roberto Trostley's physics stuff. And I know things are still mirrored on this. I can't figure out. Kelly can figure it out on hers. On my phone, it does not give me that option. Don't know what that's about. Physics is Fun by Roberto Trostley. And I know he has an update to this. This is the physics is fun one has um, has all of middle school together. It does not have ninth grade, but it has um, has through eighth grade in here. Um, but he has a new volume that is that you can buy just the grades that you need. I really like them a, a lot, and and you know it's this one is definitely written towards the classroom, whereas newer one I think is is more. Um, he, he, he and I talked about it. He, he said it's more geared towards being able to do more things as homeschoolers. And so, um, you know, definitely I would look at his new stuff. I really like this volume. Did not have um, many problems. He lists so many different experiments, physics experiments, that I didn't have any problems finding what I needed for, um, you know, for each concept at home. It wasn't like I had to be in the classroom setting. So, so the, I, I think it's a, an amazing resource. Then when it comes to actually understanding what they need, I think you need one or the other of these next two resources. I'm not sure you need both, um, and I'll tell you which one is my preference, um, but I definitely think you need one or the other. So you either, and it's really so that, and, and yes, you can, you know, we have a guide for that year, and you could just buy the guide and go through the guide, and I think that we give a lot in the guide. Um, I think what you really need to is understand Steiner for these years. You've needed to understand him anyways for these earlier years. But when it comes to how things are changing and how you're really teaching science, how you're teaching history, the the impulse behind each um, you know each piece, I think it's important and it's important to read him. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, you could probably just go and read. Um, you could just go and read the um, the lectures mm -hmm. for sure. I like both of these resources because they give you a little bit more than that. Um, there is this tasks and content of the Steiner Waldorf curriculum. Um, I like this book. The caveat I'm going to give to that is it is it departs sometimes from what he recommended um, what he recommended in the first schools, and it is definitely what they do in the school. And that's okay because that's where we're taking this from. And so it's okay to read that and adapt it. It gives you a nice um, horizontal and vertical understanding of the curriculum. Um, and uh, it allows you to really go, okay, what is it that I'm supposed to be getting across 
in this, say, art history unit or in across in this, um, and I said unit, I meant block. I get a, get across in this um, this history block or in this math block or what is it that they're really needing to learn that he really felt like they needed at this point in time. So this is very, very good for that. But my favorite resource in the whole world <laughs> is still Carl Stockmeyer's um, Rudolf Steiner's curriculum for the Waldorf schools. I like this because it gives nice meaty chunks of what he actually said. This distills it too much for me. I want to know from the horse's mouth. I want to know what he said about the subject. And so I, I like this book. I have mine. You see, I've got my post-it flags everywhere. Um, it's an easy reference guide for me. Mine is falling apart. I probably need to buy a new one. Um, but this is my preferred go-to source and what is always by my side when I'm writing, always by my side when I'm planning. Um, I like it because, like I said, it's got nice meaty chunks of lecture pieces and then tells me where it came from so I can always go and look at the entire piece and see context. So um, I, I really think that one of these sources is invaluable when you're working with um, middle school and high school. It's definitely very valuable when you're working with the younger kid years and understanding what they needed in the younger years. But there's so much that he, he said for the older children. I think it's, it's in, in invaluable resources. So the other thing I think you need is um, our Planning for Peace journal. And, and that's not just because I want to say a journal. It's because I really like the way we lay it out. And so especially when it comes to the upper grades, you know, there's definitely moms that are going to, uh, oh, mom said, can you give me the second title, please? Yes, absolutely. Um, Carl Stockmeyer's Ru um, Rudolf Steiner's Curriculum for the Waldorf Schools. It's big and blue. Um, okay. So the reason why I'm recommending our journal is because what happens is you get this information dump and you go, how do I... How do I like break that all down and how do I put that into bite-sized pieces that we can use every day? How do I not kill myself writing these lessons? So, um, you know, we try to give lesson ideas in our older guides. Our, our younger curriculum from grade six down, it's laid out by the day. But when you get in the older years, there's some departure for sure. And, and a lot of that is because I've worked with enough middle schoolers and high schoolers that I know that keeping it in a day to day to day is a little bit hard. They have, um, they have their own ideas. They have other things they want to do. They want to be involved more with what it is that you are teaching. And, and so I, I, I encourage you to, um, yeah, look at guides. Look, you know, I mean, I, we wrote a, a nice guide for grade eight and we're going to revise seven and revise ninth so that it's like the grade eight guide and put it all together. Um, and work on the high school years too, but but really what I what I want you to understand is is when you're when you're in these years, don't freak out and go oh I have to have a box curriculum I have to I have to I have to or I have to put them in an online school, you know I've been the online school route when we lived in Utah um, we were part of a charter for a while, and my older boys did some online classes, and it was okay it was hard. For me to watch that when I knew that's not exactly what um, what Steiner was saying they needed, and so it lasted for a year, in and in, in not even a complete year, we ended up, you know, I ended up going, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're not learning what I need you to learn to sort of keep up with where we are. So, um, you know, don't feel like you have to that it will make it easier for you. I think that's what a lot of parents go. Well, this will make it so much easier for me. I'll know exactly what to teach, and um, or the school will take care of it, and it'll all be online, and I don't have to worry about it. Guess what? If this is the if this is the method that you feel like is right for your family, it's it's not going to work. It's, you, you have to find ways to, to bring the two together. So I'm not saying you, you can't do that. I'm just saying please be aware and please understand what it is that your children need and, um, and what you need to be teaching them. And, and, then, and then you can decide, you know what, it's okay for me to depart from here. We have definitely departed in some places, condensed in some places for sure. Harry's senior year, he spent almost the entire year studying to take the GED. 
He did a lot of local history because we had just moved here from um, Utah and we live in California now. And I wanted him to know where we lived. I wanted him to understand it. So he went like on walkabout on his own a lot, like every single day. He spent time getting to know our city, getting to know um, this part of California and really understanding and going to the history places and understanding that those are experiences that he wouldn't have had otherwise because local history is in fourth grade. And he has done local history of Idaho. And so we needed him to do some local history of where he was. And so for sure there are departures that we make, but I know why I'm making them and I'm conscious about making them. And, um, I, you know, I try to look at, again, I look, go back to look at these resources and go, what is it that um, he felt like they needed to know before they left home and went off to college and or went off to, you know, he's serving a mission for our church. He's going to be home in like 45 days 45 days, ladies. I cannot believe he's going to be home in 45 days. I'm super excited. Um, miss my boy terribly. Um, so, you know, you want to you want to sort of, sorry, I didn't mean to depart there, but you want to sort of really know what it is that you need to be teaching or what it is that they need to be getting and then find ways to get that in. Whether it be you, whether it be um, another resource. You know, the sciences were always have always been like, I've been like, oh, okay. Here we go again with chemistry. Um, so if I can outsource some of that, I look at the science teacher that I'm outsourcing it to. I look at what Steiner recommended and what he said. I teach what I can, and then I pass it off to somebody who can teach the higher stuff. And it works beautifully, but I'm conscious of it. So that's all I'm out. All I'm saying is really be conscious of what it is that you're parting out and how you're parting it out and sort of how it connects with the whole. You, you want to think from the whole down to the parts, just like you've always done. And um, so anyways, the reason why I'm recommending our journal is because you can go from having your, um, your month, like, all right, what are you teaching for the month? So this is, um, uh, we've been reading Thornton Burgess. So all of the, <laughs> all of um, Mother West Wind and, um, and um, Mother Nature's uh, characters are everywhere in the, <laughs> the examples that I'm writing. So this is Johnny Chuck. <laughs> And in November, he's learning physiology. So then we go to the page that has the block plan. Again, Johnny Chuck. The time frame is three weeks. The block theme is physiology. Topics, to topics and concepts to cover. So this is where I really go through and I make sure I understand. I understand what's, what's in these other books. I make sure that I understand what topics it is that need to that really need to be covered. So I've got understanding bone structure, joints and how they work, and then I wrote pull in physics, so that's a note for myself. The purpose of muscles and how we move, voluntary and involuntary, and the structure of the eye. That's what we're trying to accomplish in that three week block. Um, field trips, I put down here. Um, visit a chiropractor's office and an acupuncturist, massage, etc. Um, consider the body's exhibit. Now I wrote consider because that exhibit stresses me out. And so I don't think I could actually go, but I wrote it here just in case so that you could have some ideas because these are examples. Um, again, cause this is for Johnny Chuck. <laughs> He's a woodchuck, you know? Um, and then, um, I put check out the museum of man. So we live in San Diego. We have these great, um, these great art museums and history museums. And there is a museum of man. Um, and there's, a lot of different exhibits on the body that I think would be helpful for, um, you know, for that. So, um, let's see, let's see, where's the next one? Next page is here because then I've also got block notes. I plan all of my blocks this way, all of them, even the younger grades, even the ones that I wrote a curriculum on, because I want to make sure I understand it and I want to make sure that I know what I'm teaching and I want to make sure that I have, um, I don't miss anything and I got a handle on it all. So then block notes, I, I wrote read um, Kovacs cover to cover. Now that would be um, Charles Kovacs book, Muscles and Bones. Um, and again, we're talking about eighth grade physiology. That's a great book because it has part of its seventh grade, part of its eighth grade. Um, and then I put pull out my midwifery notes to review. So that was my former life. Um, and pull out my x-rays to show my, an altered spine. So I have scoliosis and I've had um, surgeries. And um, when I was younger, when I was a teenager, and so I think it's it's helpful to be able to see what a spine that's that grows normal looks like, and then maybe one that's been altered through surgery. So I wanted to show that. 
um, and other materials needed. I put um, buy some ball joints to show how joints work. So there again, we're going to pull in some physics. So this is then I've laid out for the block. So how do you bring that then into some weekly lesson segments? And so here we go again. Now we're on um, planning this out for four weeks, but we only have three weeks for this, um, this lesson block. So again, physiology. Um, I wrote November, the three weeks before Thanksgiving. Week one, bones and joints. Explore bones, their inner structure, the spine, joints. Pull x-rays and have a whole chicken on hand. So why am I having a whole chicken on hand? Well, um, we're gonna talk about that. Um, week two, muscles. Explore muscles, voluntary and involuntary. Talk about my stroke, because I had a, a stroke three years ago. Um, so brain injuries do crazy things to your muscles and your joints, uh, really crazy things. And so because I have that experience, I wanna pull that in um, as, as part of um, our lessons. So, you know, think about the people around you. Did grandpa have a stroke? Did has somebody else had a brain injury? How did those brain injuries affect? These are the times that you pull those things in because you're studying it already. So it's a very good time for you to be able to show, well, this is how the brain's supposed to work. And this is what happens when it's injured. Um, and then how do we keep um, healthy and firm? So we're uh, still talking about muscles. And then um, I'm going to talk about bodybuilding as well. And then week three, the eye. Um, how does the eye work? Um, and then I put poetry about the eyes and then eyes and technology. So um, that would be how I break it out into weekly segments. So then I'm going to then break it down into one week. So we have one week's worth of plans. How do I take that whole concept of what I'm going to do for that week and break it down? So um, again, these are plans for Johnny Chuck my imaginary child from Mother West Wind. Um, week of October 30th through November 3rd. This week's goals, and I wrote, help Johnny get over the hump with number bases. So that's, that's, that's just, that would be another goal, not necessarily has to do with the whole block, but, but when, I, when I think about my goals for the week for each of my children, I think about where, it, where they're doing well, where they might be struggling, where um, I can help them. So, so like if I had to think about Sam for right now, it would be to um, work a little bit more on his handwork this week because he's um, fallen a little bit behind. We're not finished with our grade four project yet. You know, we're almost ready for grade five. It would be um, to practice um, karate this week. Um, if we were talking about Ellie, it might be um, to work on a piano piece that um, she's working on. Um, so, so really be thinking about what things that your child is struggling with at that time. So when you make this, this weekly plan, when I make it ahead of time, because I definitely have all of them made ahead of time, I'm really saving this weekly goals part until probably two weeks or, or a week before we actually do these lessons. So I mean, I'll have this part all laid out, all of the actual lesson parts laid out, but I will be tailoring it to what that child needs that week for my focus. So that comes back into me sitting down on Sunday and going through what's coming up the week. I can review what happened last week. I can review where I think I want to be at the end of next week. So it's about like, where have you been? Where are you? Where are you going? Always. It's always there. That's why I'm so big on evaluation because then you really know what's going on with your homeschool and you really can, um, you know, pull all of the things together. And it really, it helps with your planning. It helps with your sanity when it comes to, am I doing well with this? You know, how's this working? How's this playing through? Okay. So again, this is where my daily would be. Um, so this would be three day school week, school week. This we school three days um, and we get it all in with three days. If you want to know how to do that for any of your grades and you don't know how, please drop me a note and I'll send you a blog post link. Or you can look on our blog um, at waldorfessentials.com and um, just look at like three day rhythm. There's um, we have some samples there. And if you have questions, feel free to drop me a note. Um, so again, this is what I've got. This is where our lessons would be. Reading material for this week would be Muscles and Bones, which is Charles Kovacs book. Chapters 35 to 48. Um, day one, start with bones that we can easily see through our skin. Examine the chicken before and after. So this is why I have the whole chicken thing on there. Before and after it goes in the Instant Pot. So so I'm planning, when I'm planning my menu, we're eating this chicken. <laughs> so, but I want my child to see, we're going to look at this chicken like in depth before 
before it gets cooked, like what can you see? And then after it gets cooked and then what did the steam do to it? You know, because we use an instant pot and it's a pressure cooker. What, what happened in that process? And then we're going to be looking at the bones and, um, and you know, it's a good way to easily quickly <laughs> have some bones to review. Um, and then I put, talk about the spine and a few x-rays. Um, and this is all in day one. Um, draw the spine and then um, math, um, violin, because Johnny Chuck plays the violin, and visit a chiropractor. So that might, that might be like a, a huge day one, a huge day one. Um, that might take you right up until 2 o'clock if you started at 9.30. Um, day two, review and write about our chiropractic visit. Study the pelvis and introduce a ball joint um, and draw a hip joint. And then I put math and violin. So by this age, they're doing math every single day. Um, I really like Jamie York's Making Math Meaningful, and I know people either love it or they don't love it. I love it. Um, I think that he's also an amazing person. If you need to talk to him, you need some help, um, he's happy to help you. Um, I have not been to one of his math conferences yet, but it's on my to-do list, even though Eleanor doesn't think that is nice because <laughs> she doesn't like math. and She thinks I'm consorting with the enemy if I do that. Um, but I really like Jamie York, so I would definitely take a look at his materials if you haven't already. Um, then day three, I've got review. Um, study the hands and the feet. Model the hand. Math and violin. So this would be what my week would look like. And, um, you know, when it comes to, like, the writing portions, a lot of moms are worrying about, you know, where's their writing at this point? What is it that I need to worry about? If you've been doing these, these summaries all this time, and you've been doing, you've been gradually getting more and more, so in the schools, they're often not doing um, their own work until um, grade five. At home, um, I have them, I, the, the last block of grade three, I will say, all right, let's see how you can do on your own. And I don't like, like leave them blind. I give them a little prompt if they need it, but I want to see how they've been developing the summary, um, the, you know, this ability to write a summary. And, um, and we have a video, I think on writing summaries. If you, if you need more information on that, then in grade four, they're writing all of their own. I'm still right there helping if they need help and grade five and on. So they've been doing, they've had this time period where they are writing it on their own. And so I want you to not be stressed out about that. You're wanting the writing to have more depth. You, um, you know, you're definitely wanting to make sure that they're citing things at this point. And, um, and you're definitely wanting to see that they really understand the material. You know, you've been wanting to see that all along, but there should be more depth in the writing um, at about in middle school than there was, you know, in the elementary years. So um, Anna Catherine asks, um, with drawings or modeling the hand... Um, would it take a long, yes, it would take a longer day for sure. Depending on the child, um, you know, when I ask Eleanor specifically, cause she's an artist, um, will you draw something or will you paint something? I will usually say on Monday, I would like this concept painted or drawn by Friday. So she's got the space to do it. She can really think about it while we're working on the lesson. She can take her time with it and, and really feel into it. Um, but she's an artist and that's the artist's way. And so she's also um, going to be in 11th grade. I've been doing that with her probably since ninth grade or so, where I've been saying, okay, here's the concept. Here's what I want by the end of the week. Um, at this stage, all of my children surpass me in drawing like by here. And so I know Samuel probably won't. So I'm still working on my drawing and still working on making sure that I have something um, and he's on eighth grade, but by the time he gets there, you know, uh, my, my art is coming along as well. And so, um, you know, you definitely want to get parameters if you're not, um, using a sample that's your own, but whenever possible, please use a sample that is your own. Um, unless of course you have a child that's like crazy artist and they're like, mom, you're drawing stick people compared to me. Um, so anyway. For sure. And definitely when it comes to clay modeling and things like that, that's going to take some time because you're, you're modeling with clay um, at this point and modeling the hand, you know, you're going to be taking time to look at the hand and you're going to be working on it. And, and that doesn't happen in a vacuum. Again, you've been working with clay all of this time and modeling different things. And so, you know, the, the modeling project might take the whole week. It might, it might be again, something that you start 
and that you have to come back to because that's a you know it's a it's a big project make sure that if you are using clay you keep it nice and wet and moist in a um, in a bag and it should be fairly malleable for you to come back to when you come back the next day so anyways I am hoping that that's helpful this is where the rubber meets the road then you just go and you start teaching you know <laughs>